question and Sure. Um, so I, if you look at the structure of how we wrote the strategic plan, and, and sometimes they differ um, depending on how you define the different things, um, we have our organizational mission as the, the top statement of what we do as a city. So um, it's important to remember that we're, we're talking about an organizational strategic plan. This is for the, the organization of the city. So basically the administration of the city. It's not a community plan so to speak. Um, it's more of things that the city has authority, control over, and things we can do. Um, it's not uh, quite aspirational for the entire community, although that might be a, an interesting um, process to go through. This one, this particular strategic plan is focused on the organization of the city and what's within our authority. So the mission is what you as the, the commission has decided is what the city does. It's our purpose, it's our function, it's what we do. Um, the vision then becomes, what do we want that to look like? What does it look like for us to do our mission? And then the values are, what do we hold to while we do that mission, that vision? So the mission is what we do, the vision is kind of what that looks like, and then the values are how we accomplish that mission and what we have for our priorities as we do it. Um, and then once you get through those, then the goals are where I think probably is we spent the most time last time. And that is that is the real guidance to the city staff on where do we want to go. The vision is more aspirational, um, where the goals begin to start to be concrete things or concrete ideas that we want to follow. So. I would review them in the order that we created them from top to bottom, um, which is probably the best because everything should flow down through the strategic plan. So start out with the organizational mission. Um, and I know these are short, but I don't know if, if for those of that participated in the process, there were times where we spent 45 minutes to an hour on one of these sentences to make sure that it really reflected what we wanted to do um, and really what we were and what we are as an organization. Um, so my recommendation would just be to start with the mission, move on to the vision and the values. Um, I doubt we'll get much further than that tonight. Uh, and then our next meeting, focus on the goals, which I think are really the, the bread and butter of what the commission is, is providing us for specific guidance. Like that is where the strategies and the actions will come out of. They will come out of the goals. How they're implemented will come out of the mission, vision, and values but the actual what comes out of it will be determined by the goals. Um, hopefully that, that makes sense. Yeah, that's great. I think um, along the way, as far as process, I, I think we discuss the mission statement, you know, or read it or, you know, public can read it as well. And then we can leave it, I think each section of this should be left open to discussion as far as public comment. Um, we could do either, you know, public comment after kind of re we revisit each of these and then right at the end, commissioner comments at the end. Um, and that would be just this first page really. Uh, I think instead of going, I, at first I was thinking after each one we should have um, open discussion, but I think it could get in the weeds a little more, but we want everyone to have a chance to give their uh, thoughts and feedback. And I, are you guys okay with waiting until the end of the first page after we look at it, reread the mission, the vision, and then the values, and then have an open conversation after that. Yeah, Darrell, this is Quentin. Yeah. Um, are we talking about our organizational goals at the end? Is that? Yeah, so that yeah. first page. So this is really the, you know, the who we are. Right. right. And the first yeah, page yeah. about the, some of the process. And like Michael said, this is a work, a working document sort of 
I guess is what yeah. I like to call it for the, the work the city does to um, implement, you know, changes or uh, to bring ordinances, et cetera. This is their, I guess, the overall. And then we move to the mission and vision. So Michael, do you mind just reading the mission out? And then we'll go to the vision. And then um, I think we'll have public comment after we read each of these out. Sure, so the City of Livingston organizational mission. We provide essential services, quality of life opportunities, and maintain what is best about Livingston while providing for growth in a manner that is fiscally responsible with integrity and compassion. Okay, go on to the... So the City of Livingston organizational vision, a dedicated team of leaders working in collaboration with a diverse community to create a vibrant home surrounded by natural beauty, respectful of our unique history and full of opportunity. Okay, great. And I guess the last in the org organizational values. Sure, the city of Livingston organizational values. Number one, collaborative. We work together effectively and transparently with the public, our boards and committee, community partners, private entities, other governments, and within our organization. Two, excellence. We provide dependable quality services through flexible and customer focused efforts with maximum competence. Three, integrity. We are transparent, trustworthy, and honest, committed to doing what is fair and just while maintaining a sense of humor and sense of community. Four, innovation. We are creative and efficient in seeking new ways to solve problems and embrace change. And number five, stewardship. We carefully and responsibly manage our city's infrastructure, employees, fiscal resources and environmental impacts. Thank you. So looking, so commissioners first, do you have any questions or thoughts on the mission on any overall problems, issues? Anything on the mission or, or, the, val or the vision? Anything that comes to mind or in, mind or what you'd like to discuss in relationship to both of those. And then I think I was going to say wait till the end for our discussion, but I think the values are sort of meet. So we want to make sure we have enough um, time for feedback on that as well. Um, Darrell Quinn here. Um, I'm uh, I still remember uh, how much time and effort we did put into this and uh, I'm still very, very happy with what we have written and uh, uh, what else was I gonna say? It's escaping me at the moment. Um, now I'll think of it, but um, but overall, I, 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 I like the way it's written, the way we're at, and uh, I still, still think it uh, has value. All right, thanks, Quentin. Melissa, anything from you? Um, not right now. I'd like to hear from the public first. All right, so like I said, I thought we would go to the end, but I think that might be a little um, too much to discuss all at one time. So any public comment on our mission and vision? I cannot, yeah, I cannot see anyone's hands raised. I apologize because we have the document up. So yeah, Mal or Michelle, was that you? Yes, thank you. Hi, Chair Hoagland, and uh, thank you for inviting comments. I'm just listening in here today and um, wanted to offer that I think that uh, it, I agree. I think these are... Um, the, the mission and the vision that you've set forth so far sounds really in line with um, what I think I've heard from our community. So 
just want to say here, here, I think you're on the right track. I wanted you to know there are citizens listening and, um, and sometimes, you know, uh, silence is just a, a silent nod, although that you are moving in the right direction. So thank you. Thank you, Mar or, thank you, Michelle. No worries. <laughs> All right, anyone else on our mission and vision? Yes, uh, this is Patricia Grable. Yep, I just saw your hand go up. Patricia, go ahead. Uh, I just have a question about the nature of the mission and vision. So it says this is the goal we're seeking. This is this is the guidelines by which we function as a city commission. It I just was wondering if if you don't live up to part of it, for example, does that how does that what does that mean? That means that we set out a mission, we just didn't quite make it, you know, but this is what we wish we would do on on most situations is that kind of how that is is set out perhaps you have i mean they make all kinds of sense i think the mission and vision are really quite wonderful but i'm just wondering what kind of role do they play um well Michael or Melissa or Quentin, do you want to help me answer that as far as well, I can certainly answer it from the planning document. So this is a planning for the city's work. So the city staff, the city's role and responsibilities in in what they bring to the commission and the community. Okay, so it's not just what the city, like Michael said, it's not about what the city wants necessarily, or that I'm sorry, the community wants and every detail of what we want and, and believe in as a community, but this is like achievable work that we can do as a commission along with city staff. I think sometimes I, I forget that, that the strategic plan is, it is pretty directed or it, as directed as it, can be for the work that they do. But um, Michael, do you wanna help with that question? Sure, I think that that's a great question because the mission and the vision are aspirational, right? They're, they're the things that we want to be and they're the way we want it to look. Um, we're not always gonna live up to that. Um, and many times, depending on who's reading it, they will have different interpretations of what it means. Uh, so there's gonna, be, there's gonna be conflict and disagreement when you get this down to, um, the implementation level. When you come down to a, an action, some people may not believe it lives up to the mission and others may believe it does. But in general, I think the mission and the vision are something that the community and certainly the city can agree that this is, this is our aspiration and this is what we want to do. And we want everyone to feel like we're living up to it. Uh, but once you get down to implementation, uh, if you can live up to your aspirational statements and implementations, then you didn't have high enough aspirations. Uh, then you, you didn't try hard enough. Uh, and so I think this that really is what the mission and the vision are, are those high goals where if we did it exactly like we wanted to do it, that's how it would look. Um, we, we aren't gonna do that because we're an organization of people that make mistakes, but I think everyone can agree that there, there has to be that aspirational goal that you want to reach um, you know, the, the strategic plan isn't like a, uh, a code or an ordinance or, or a state law where if you fail to meet it, there's uh, some kind of consequence. It is just the vision of the city for where we want to go and how we want to do it. Um, so there's not a practical consequence if you fail to meet a portion of the strategic plan, whether that's the mission, vision, values, goals, strategies, actions. Um, but it is, it is the guiding you know, it, it is the guiding flag or whatever you want to say for city operations. If we come up with a situation that isn't addressed anywhere, these are the standards and these are the, um, the values that we use to make the decisions on how to move forward. Um, this is that 
broad intent of the commission on how things should operate. And so we always look back to it. And that's why it's important, even if it's aspirational, it is guidance on what to do when we run into situations that aren't specifically outlined in code or other directives. Okay, good answer. Thank you very much. All right, any other public feedback or okay. comment on the mission and vision? Chair Hoagland, I'd like to add to the Michael's answer. Great, go ahead. I think that there, I think that there is a chain of accountability for the mission and vision for staff, right? That goes through department heads and ultimately to the city manager. So obviously if someone was not fulfilling their duty or I don't know, embezzling, I'm just trying to think of like extreme examples, like people weren't doing their work or they were stealing money from the city or something. There's a chain of responsibility um through department heads and ultimately to michael cardus to implement um or you know to work towards that mission of like essential services or fiscal responsibility and then as it pertains to the city manager and the commission there is a review process and that of course is um often closed meetings an executive session because it's hr so these are conversations that happen. They just, due to the nature of the conversations, they're not always um, public meetings. So there is, I think, a chain of accountability. And then, of course, the commission, we're elected. So if we're not doing those things, we don't get elected or we don't get reelected. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to add to that, that I think there is like a chain that's actionable with both the mission. Well, the mission especially, the vision is certainly... Um, written differently where it's less um, quantitative, although the dedicated team of leader, leaders working in collaboration is certainly something that could be measured. So I would just add that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Melissa. All right, any other last public comment? Okay, before we move on to the values. I've got my hand up. Chair Holden. Oh, cool. Sarah. Sarah Stans, 217 Southeast Street. Um, I think these are really great. And uh, I wasn't part of some of those earlier conversations when they were being developed. So I would just love to hear uh, about what the quality of life opportunities, how does that translate um, to the city? or to the commission, or could you elaborate on that, that part? Oh, and then, sorry, I'll just keep my question all together. And then the second part was um, in the mission um, that we you talk about maintaining what is best. And I guess, is that in the context of growth or um, is that just on its own maintaining what is best? And um, I guess that, I, that part was just a little bit like, do they, exist with yeah. in each other or you know is there with all with the change and diversity and collaboration if there was a space in the language um for also creating and improving maybe quality of life opportunities or um so and, and maybe it sits somewhere else in the vision so that's all those are my questions thank you good questions um it is, a, I guess, a, what is best about Livingston, you know, that it, I guess that's relative, right, to each of us. And I think I, that's one of the reasons I recall, and Quentin might remember too, uh, why we put that in is because, you know, our diverse ways of thinking, you know, I would say COVID's brought that especially to the forefront. You know, that is what um, one of the things that a lot of us have thought is best about us is that we really do tend to have a lot of opinions and very strong ones, but work together quite well. Um, and, you know, our outdoors and our river, that's been an uh, overall statement brought to us as a commission for from the beginning of when I was on and way before that and um, really valuing that 
uh, but this, of, of course, this statement is very, it's vague and it's meant to be. It's just sort of an overview of who we want to be and aspire to be. Um, do we see any uh, changes, I guess, in the mission or additions, such as Sarah was saying that, um, you know, we wordsmith these for 45 to an hour for each this one thing. Um, making sure we covered everything. It doesn't mean that it's still perfect and we have had changes and um, do we want to see changes to the mission statement? Do we need additions? Commissioners and or Michael, if you want to help explain or I don't know, add to, I should say. Um, I'll just go back and touch on the quality of life opportunities. I think Sarah asked about that. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Chair Hogan is absolutely right. There is a lot that is encompassed in this one sentence, and it's it's one sentence, but there is um, there's a multitude of uh, concerns that people had, ideas about how things should happen that are encapsul encapsulated in the sentence. So just the quality of life opportunities. I remember we spent quite a bit of time talking about that, and so that encompasses. Um, not only quality of life opportunities such as uh, you know the our natural surroundings and, and our opportunities to get out and enjoy our parks and trails, but also people uh, included in their uh, economic opportunities, uh, opportunities for families, like really those things that make Livingston a community. So it's not um, it is not narrowly focused. It is widely focused and. Um, is part of what makes this kind of a living document. If there's a quality of life opportunity that wasn't considered when this was written, it still is to be embraced through this mission, right? Like it, it, isn't, it isn't frozen to the time we wrote it. If there's a new quality of life opportunity, um, then that fits in the mission and we can encompass that in, in how we move forward in strategies and actions. And I think that was exactly what the best about Livingston um, also represented was it wasn't about we want to freeze it where it's at, but we don't want to lose what makes us unique and special as we move forward. Uh, that doesn't mean that there isn't room for new ideas or uh, you know new priorities or new anything. It just means that as we grow and as we um, you know as we change as a community, we want to maintain those things that people in Livingston maintain or really hold dear that sense of community, that uniqueness, um, that tie to Montana and to um, you know, the outside and, and, and nature, those things that, that I think you could get wide agreement uh, are best about Livingston. We don't wanna lose those as we provide for new opportunities. So it was the, yes, we wanna provide opportunities and we wanna move forward, but we wanna do it in a way that maintains all the good things that we already have. Um, at least that's what I got out of it, hopefully that is commissioners what you had intended when you wrote it? Yeah, I'll interject, uh, Darrell. Yeah, that Michael sums it up very well. Um, that's exactly how I feel about this as well. And, you know, when we get into the quality of life things um, and, and things like that, uh, you will find them, you know, as we go into a safe, safe and healthy community, you know, that's improving community of life and stuff like that um quality of life so um yeah it, it is vague but it, it it's it's somewhat meant to be as far as i remember um um yeah a lot of time was spent <laughs> especially on these um on these two on the vision and the mission and uh and trying to be succinct you know without being too wordy thank you i yield and so I think it goes to that question. I feel like where we're at on the mission and the vision are great. I want us to stay with the verbiage that we have. I think that question from Sarah is very valid in that we do need to consider some um, you know, finer points. And that's where we put that into our values and then into um, obviously and within our goals and the organizational goals. Um, 
our strategies and goals in the, you know, in the document further down in the document. But right. I think that with the mission and the vision, I think are really, um, I like. Anyone else? Are you asking the public or commission? Well, well, from what I just said, I guess, Melissa or Quentin, and then uh, public, we still have public feedback. And Sarah, do you feel like your questions were answered? Yeah, I do. It's it's really nice to hear you elaborate, you know, on like what those mean, because it, it you know, there are a few words that are condensed and they mean big things. So I really appreciate you taking the time to, yeah, kind of discuss it and, and what came up in previous conversations and also Mike, your understanding. And so that helps a lot. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Sarah. I think we are a big little town. So we do things. I like that word big. Good point. Um, Melissa, anyone else? Uh, I know you didn't say anything, Melissa, from that, but any other public comments or Melissa, did you have anything else on that? I'm happy to wait for the public. I'm looking to see if there's any hands on the participant list and I don't see any. Any more hands? All right. Okay, so let's move on to, unless Melissa, well, do you want yeah. any last feedback? Yeah, I, um, I think it's interesting that Sarah I can't. So first of all, I don't remember if I was part of the whole strategic plan process or just the last half when we first did this. If it was split between the previous commissioner and myself. So um, I think, Melissa, you were part of the when we we renewed it, but we didn't spend. It was a very short amount of time because you weren't on the commission when we wrote it. I think I was on at the very end when you were editing it or something. I can't remember yeah. exactly. But um, anyway, I think that it was interesting that she pointed out the lack of a qualifier for quality of life opportunities, because that was one thing that I made a note of. Um, and I would the fact that the growth policy exists now, like we have a community vision document that we did not have when this was written. Um, when I think about the organizational mission, I'm thinking about that. However, I know that it's a requirement according to code that we must use that document when we're making different decisions. So I don't know if it's worth putting language in the mission um, because really I think it's about when I think of this, first of all, the quality of life opportunity, I think maintain or improve is reasonable because everything we're doing is going to be to maintain or improve. We're obviously not working to lessen or, you know, whatever the opposite of improve is, our quality of life opportunity in Livingston. Um, so I'd be fine with that addition of language. And then for maintain what is best about Livingston while providing for oh, it. Sorry, did you sure. say something? I'm hearing an echo. That was me, I apologize. I'm changing from my computer to my phone. Okay. Did you Go need on. to say anything? Okay. And then for the last part of the sentence where it says, maintain what is best about Livingston while providing for growth in a manner that is fiscally responsible. Um, I think I would say something more along the lines of providing for growth in a manner that centers our community vision that is fiscally responsible. Because that is what is best about living. Say that too. again, Melissa. I'm switching. Like I said, I'm switching to my phone because I have to start going to this other meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so say that again, how you'd like it to read. 
And I can, if we run out of time, I can like wordsmith it up better and write it down and for the next meeting. Um, oh, that'd be great. Yeah, if you'd rather I do that. I was just thinking I'd change the order a little bit since we actually have a community vision now, which is our growth policy. Instead of saying maintain what is best, because mm -hmm. all that, some of that's identified in this massive document. Um, I think I would say like providing for growth, there's gotta be a better way to phrase that, but providing for growth in a manner that centers our community vision that is fiscally responsible. Okay. Um, I think maybe the one thing I would, I don't want to lose what's best about Livingston that, because I think it's a more of a general statement, like this is who we are as a people, you know, it's sort of a, like that who the core so i wonder how we can do maybe both and maybe it's just the way it's stated now isn't quite right then if we i mean we only have five minutes left of this meeting we can yeah i'm starting and, and to be honest like we didn't even know what this meeting was going to be about until we got here so a little mm -hmm. more time might not be a bad thing um I mean, we knew generally what the meeting was going to be about, but not this specific. So it gives time to offer some better wording suggestions rather than doing it on the fly. Yeah, I, I think that could be the next step or in the process. Um, I think, you know, previously it was sort of a banter back and forth as to best uh, language or set sentences or to describe whatever we, um, so it was a back forth process and I think we can continue that. So would you bring that to the next meeting then on your, what you're thinking um, those additions would be? Yeah, I can do that for my thoughts on the vision too. Okay, that's great. So why don't we move to that, if you don't mind, to the vision. Um, any, anything, any feedback on the vision in general before we move to a quick overview of the values or a quick discussion before we have to um, end the meeting? I would... I have a couple of tweaks I would make on the vision, but I can bring the language to the next meeting if you want, Darrell. Um, no, I think it. that's great. You okay. you have a lot of skills. You've obviously you brought a lot of good writing to us as a commission, and uh, I appreciate your thoughts on it. Um, so going okay. on then to the values. Uh, I, I feel we're missing something. I'm going to just state this in general, and then we can start the meeting, the next meeting on values and really refining those. But I feel like we're missing something and I haven't actually defined it myself. Um, but I feel like we're missing, like we need a sixth one. And I haven't, like I said, they haven't quite, um, define that yet. Any thoughts from everyone on organizational values and where you see just or a general statement on that? Is that for the public or for us? Yeah, why don't we hear from the public? I'm going to actually have to get in my car and start driving, but I'm going to keep listening. And then I will have to close the meeting because we won't have a quorum. And I'm sorry that uh, that's happening, but I need to do this. So any, any commissioner comments on the values and or um, public comment? So we can then bring that to the forefront at the end or at the beginning of the next meeting. Sarah's hands up. I'll just tell you since you're probably on your phone. Yeah, would you would you help with that? I can't see who is raising a hand. So go ahead, Sarah. 
Thanks, Sarah Sands, 217 South East Street. I don't, don't I think I need to say my address, right? Just tell me if I don't need to. Um, I, I just reading quickly, and I think you're right, Darrell, there's, um, there does seem to be a piece missing. Um, just a, a brief scan, the environmental impacts, you know, just talks about, you know, the damage to the environment. It doesn't say that we value, you know, what the environment is around us. So I think that piece is missing um, rather than trying to reduce damage. And then um, integrity, I feel, um, is, you know, one of the strong points and maybe it would be bumped up um, if there is a priority um, within these, but also that environmental is only mentioned at the very end um, too. And I think that might be worthy to place a little bit further up in the values if there is a hierarchy. Thanks, that's all I have right now. Thank you, sorry, I couldn't get it off a of mute. Um, if, Michael, would you mind taking? Sure, um, as far as the, the values go, there is not a priority. Um, these are not, uh, these are, are not in the order of importance. Uh, the idea is that these are the values that the organization holds to um, anytime they're interacting with anyone, internally or externally. Uh, though these are the values that we want to live up to in our actions. Uh, it's also, um, and it can be a little confusing, it's not values as far as what do we value about our community, whether that's environmental or people or whatever. It's, it's organizational values in how we act. Uh, so that's why it's collaborative, excellence, integrity, and stewardship. It's, it's our actions and not necessarily things we value. It's what we value and how we interact with the public or each other. Thanks, Mike. That's exactly how I would put it as well. Yeah, there is no ranking here. Um, there are just um, five items that we um, identified. Okay, how about other public feedback on that. We'll add your thoughts to our discussion um, at the beginning uh, and address it more thoroughly at that time. But anyone else have public comment on the goals that you'd like to share? Patricia Grabo's hand is, hand is up. Thank you. I, I've always disliked the, con, the word stewardship. So I, I'm wondering if there might be a word that word would work better, just a suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. I think that word was uh, discussed quite thoroughly during um, during the initial planning. So it doesn't surprise me that we're hearing about it again. Thank you. Um, anyone else on public comment or commissioners? Jonathan's here to speak. Yeah, Jonathan Hedinger, uh, 111 North C Street. Um, I was just thinking um, there should be some sort of value about equity or something like that. I just think that that doesn't, that's just something that I think is a value of the community is, as shown by like the commitment to diversity and things like that. But I just think that um, it'd be important to try and put that as a value. So thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, I apologize. Looks like we lost Ralph. She's on the screen. She's just muted. Or I don't I see her on the screen anymore. I see her at the very bottom of my oh, screen. There she is. All right. Okay. Yeah. at the next meeting. I missed most of what she said, though. I don't know about you, Quentin. Yeah, no, I, I missed most of what she said. I think at this point, it's probably a good idea to, a um, good time to um, adjourn unless we can get a better. 
she's gone now. Yeah, now she's gone. Yep. Well, it was a start, a good start. Um, and, uh, and so at this point, um, we'll have to conclude the meetings as we do not have a quorum. Um, this meeting's adjourned at 634. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you. Good night, everyone.